language barriers, cultural differences, uh, you know, uh, some of the uh, Latinos changing jobs, uh, a community that is really used to paying out of pocket, and the list goes on and on. The problem here is that we've, we've seen with our experience that usually they don't have established relationship with a primary care physician. And what is even worse is that they end up using the ER, the emergency room of the first line of care. I'm a co-founder and CEO at Mi Salud Health. We provide culturally authentic care for the Latino and Hispanic community. And let me give you my definition of authentic. A definition for authentic would be uh, real, genuine, and trustworthy. So when we started the company, we, as members of the Latino community, we asked ourselves, what's important? And the first thing that we knew was that providing Spanish-speaking services was not enough. We wanted our members to feel that Mi Salud was uh, genuine, um, real, and someone to be trusted. That's Mi Salud. So thank you for having us, CHCF, and Startup Hilt. Why we start the company? Back in 2021, in the middle of the pandemic, we noticed that our community was getting double to triple hospitalization and mortality rates. We think more, and I guess as any other American, you know, what was the reason? Navigating insurance can be complex, finding an available primary care physician, and then insurance, of course, sometimes can be expensive. However, there were unique barriers for the Latino community. Uh, language barriers, cultural differences, uh, you know, uh, some of the uh, Latinos changing jobs, think about those workers following the season, uh, a community that is really used to paying out of pocket, and the list goes on and on. The problem here is that we've, we've seen with our experience that usually they don't have established relationship with a primary care physician. And what is even worse is that they end up using the ER, the emergency room of the first line of care. That's a big problem. And it has been going on for decades and no one has been able to solve it. So we just started to start by rolling out Missalute with the employers. By the way, uh, the Latino community represents almost 20% of the US workforce. So think about Senora Lopez. She can be an employee at an agriculture company in California. Let's say she works in Oxnard, California. Senora Lopez, when we roll out Missalud at her company, probably she's going to fall in two buckets. We know that Latinos, unfortunately, we over-index in chronic conditions like diabetes, hypertension, high cholesterol. Senora Lopez has really high chances of whether knowing that she has a condition, but she has not done anything about it, so it's uncontrolled, or maybe she has a chronic condition, but she's not aware of it. So the way that we designed Misalud was really about making sure that we can educate Senora Lopez about any risk factors that she has. First of all, we put um, a team of health coaches who are licensed physicians back in Mexico. They're not here to practice medicine. Or coaches, their the job that they do is to build trust with Senora Lopez, to get her educated and to make sure that she understands and she's aware of any risk factors that she has. The main goal of a health coach will be to get Senora Lopez to establish a relationship with the primary care physician. However, in the meantime, Senora Lopez has access to the network of licensed physicians in California uh, where she can get medical orientation, a prescription, um, a second medical opinion, things like that. We also have a team of mental health coaches that literally are the same uh, structure that we have. Mental health coaches were licensed physicians back in Mexico uh, who provide mental health support to our socios, our members. And finally, our navigators, which is key because, again, one of the industries that Miss Salud is really focused is the agriculture industry. And we shall never take for granted that the fact that someone has a smartphone means that they don't have tech or literacy barriers. So our navigators, they make sure that every socio is able to navigate the virtual care services that Miss Salute offers. Um, something important, and we were intentional on starting uh, with uh, health fairs and in-person events because we're able to build trust and access. Hablamos en español, we make sure that they understand what is Miss Salute about. And also when we do health fairs, we have the ability to take their biometrics and their vitals. So we can identify whoever is at risk, or for instance, if someone is a pre-diabetic, then we can enroll them in one of our preventative care programs. What we learned is that usually uh, acute care is the entry point. Maybe they use misalud because they have an allergy, but then we move people from being reactive to taking a more proactive approach to their health. 
Um, finally, how it works, uh, we're really proud about building our product. It goes without saying that it's HIPAA compliant, but the most important thing, it's really user friendly because our rule of thumb has been that my grandmother should be able to use it by herself. Because again, we want to make sure that any field worker is able to use Missile by themselves and they don't need translators or their grandsons to help them navigate our app. Uh, last but not least, where we are, we have, uh, we're close to hitting our 10,000 uh, member mark uh, with 45% enrollment rates, which by the way, it's really above and beyond the industry standards. According to McKinsey, the average is 18%. And again, this secret sauce of uh, doing it in person, building trust has been a success for me. Salute. We're really proud to say that our CSAT score, it's about almost 100% satisfaction score. So they love to talk to the coaches and then get access to all of our services. And finally, uh, since we started the company, we've been able to identify uh, almost 75% of users with a condition. And this is the team behind Me Salud. Uh, it was uh, founded by a trio, Bismarck, Cindy, which is myself and Wendy, uh, who have, we've been working in tech for more than 10 years. Uh, and we have a couple of previous exits. Um, and then it's Latina led on the clinical side of things. Uh, so our team makes sure that any program that we offer is, is really culturally authentic. Uh, muchas gracias. That's mi salud. I guess for me, when I take a look at it, you actually have a, a lot of traction. Could you tell us what the secret was to driving the customer adoption that you've seen? Um, it's really incredible. Thank you. Well, so far, we decided to start with employers. As I mentioned, right now, we have uh, 10 paying customers. Uh, as I one of them is already an enterprise. Uh, we're working with Taylor Farms. For those of you that are not, not familiar with the agriculture space, this is similar to Driscoll's uh, or you can like Smokers. It's, it's, it's an important logo. Um, I think that employers recognize the importance on, on really, it's hard to engage the Latino community. It's hard. Um, so sort of like the way that we're doing it, it's really resonating with the employees. And I think that's what is getting us through the door. When you take a look at Me Salud versus other virtual care platforms in the space, like what really, you know, do you believe is your biggest differentiator? Absolutely. We usually get this question, like, why is it different to, you know, like Teladoc or any other services? I think it's four things. First of all, the product, because again, the product has been designed with the Latino community front and center, and we make sure that there's no barriers and it's really user friendly. Number two, uh, what I mentioned about being culturally attuned. So, uh, you know, talking to someone that understands that tortillas are going to be part of your diet, it's a really game changer where you, you can really build trust and you really resonate and you, you relate to that person. So that's a big part of the, the product. Uh, the in-person helpers, uh, it's not a take it or leave it thing. It's really us. And I guess that's connected to the fourth point, which is we're a high touch solution. So we do a lot of outreach. We keep our users on their toes in a good way to say, hey, how are you doing? How are you feeling? So we do a lot of personalized uh, follow-ups to make sure that we can hand holders or users. And I think that's a big differentiator with other solutions that it's more like available, but it's on you to use it. So you're taking this very holistic approach. My final question is, you, know, you need to really have quality people on the other end of that screen or on the phone or the text um, who really know what they're doing. What are the what are the qualifications, the credentials of your health coaches? That's a great question. So all of our health coaches work for us full time. So this is not an Uber type of platform where any physician can do hours. And we obviously uh, look for physicians who have at least five years of experience. We put them through different screenings, evaluations. Uh, they go through an interviewing process before they can actually do live hours in our platform. And they work as a team. So it's a really uh, collaborative model where our health coaches, mental health coaches, and licensed physicians in the U.S., everybody's bilingual, and they work together as a team. But we, we put them through a screening process to make sure that we have the right uh, you know, coaches on our platform.